Welcome to the Brothers Born Podcast. We're back and we are ready to begin these unlikely throwdowns. Let's I'm, get ready to rumble. Yeah, I'm excited for this one. Um, so as previously noted, um, I am the judge today and I helped assign Kevin and David each a uh, character. And now I'm going to give them a chance to introduce their character. I'm going to roll a dice. Odds number odd is Kevin, even is David. <laughs> Whatever I get, that person goes first. You and your dice. Even is David. It's number 14. So, um, David, why don't you give us start us off, pal? Okay, so first I'll give you just a few little tidbits, and then you guess who it is. And then I'll tell okay. you, of course, why my character will win. So I'll start with a quote like I always like to do. Until that day, till we are all one. The character I have was originally a dock worker, and he was injured and rebuilt and then became a powerful leader. Um, he, let's see, what else can I say? He's fought all, he's fought all kinds of battles everywhere. In fact, um, he fought the Taliban at one point because the Canadian Special Forces, they had an operation in Afghanistan. Kevin, you might know about this. And um they named their af operation after him. Of course, I can't say the name yet because you'll know who it was, but one second on that. Um, he's also uh, the British, former British Prime Minister, Jordan Brown. I can't read my handwriting, but a British Prime Minister um, has quoted as saying this guy, he'd like, to, had, he'd like to meet this guy because this guy is able to solve all of the world's problems, um, unlike the British politicians. So, and even in China, they have a 10 meter tall statue of my character. So that just shows how powerful and how important he is worldwide. Do you have any guesses so far who it might be? No. <laughs> oh, really? I'm like, surprised by that. I, I feel like I points, should. Kevin. The China thing I thought would have put it over the top for you. So what do you want me to do, Stephen? Tell or just give uh, more? Just give, more just sprinkle a little more truth okay. about this character. Okay, anyway. I will. Um, but I feel like everything else I say will give it away. <laughs> he, he's died. He's died a lot, but he always seems to come back to life after he dies. Um, he let's see. He has what can I say about him without giving it away? He has impeccable moral character. He's come very on, Optimus Prime. Was he one of our characters? Optimus Prime. You got it. You got oh, it. This one. This one is going to be a little bit hard. <laughs> so, All right. <laughs> now, now, do I go on or do we just, we'll get Kevin's character first. Yeah, let's get Kevin's character we'll now. All right. I'm trying to think of how I can say I thing, have to right? wait. One more thing back to the Canadian thing. This is legit, man. The Canadian Special Forces in Afghanistan, they called this operation Op for Operation, Operation Short for Operation. Op Timus Prime is what they called it. And it took down lots of key Taliban leaders. That's crazy. I didn't know that. That's awesome. That's, that's interesting. And, you have a lot more British, interesting facts than I do. <laughs> the British Prime Minister, you said... Um, he'd like to meet Optimus Prime because he knows he could solve the world's problems better than the British politicians. I mean, that's that that's I mean, a pretty. I mean, he's already making you're, you're already making headway into several different countries, man. That's a good I, sign. It's a good sign. Wide. See, see, you almost gave me too much of when you first start off with this quote. I was like, oh, that's Optimus Prime. Then you started going off all these crazy quotes about Taliban, and I'm like, oh, maybe it's not Optimus Prime. All right, um, I don't know how to introduce mine without giving it away. So, um, I will say that knowledge of this character's existence uh began in 1979 so you're um, after i was born yeah that's okay. very true um i want you to picture yourself for a moment david you're you're on a on a spaceship for example or maybe it's in a dark hallway and you're kind of walking and walking and then um i would like to give a quote as well which is <laughs> um <laughs> you're just walking and then you uh the lights are out and he thinks you catch something out of the corner of your eye. You turn around and you just see this giant, like black thing. And, and then you're dead. Um, let's see. What can we talk about? Gutted alive, mind you. Yeah. Gutted alive. Very likely gutted alive. <laughs> is that that, that alien thing that I don't really know much about? <laughs> yes. Yes. My character is a xenomorph. xenophobe or xenomorph or whatever yeah. it is. Xenomorph. Okay. Gotcha. So we have, we have Optimus Prime legendary leader of the Autobots and, you know, now inspiration for multiple world countries and in a xenomorph who is all about destruction. I'm kind of curious. <laughs> and reproducing, was, apparently. I'm kind of curious. I wonder if a xenomorph could reproduce in an Autobot. Well, let's find out. David, the floor is yours. <laughs> all right. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. 
my research was a little lacking this time, but I found some good things that I think is going to put me over the top. It's just been a busy, you know, time. So I came with concise, you know, powerful things. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you, first of all, his important traits that he has. Um, impeccable moral character. He's very humble. He's friend. He's a friend of the human species, g- humans, which obviously your guy is not. Um, he's a genius battle commander. He's always willing to sacrifice his own life, which I guess this could be kind of a detriment to him winning too, but he's always willing to sacrifice his own life for his friends. Um, he has a positive attitude. He is in the battlefield. He's like He's very good in the battlefield, but he uses battle as a last resort. Um, I didn't know this before, but he's a martial arts expert. You guys probably knew that. I did not. I did Um, not. He's a (laughs) weapons expert, which I did. I figured that. And he's a, he's an honorable, uh, he has an honorable sense of justice. Um, Now, the other things I want to do, just, I just want to list some, some powers that he has. Some of them I knew about, some of them I didn't, but after this, comprehensive list here i don't think anyone can take him down so i'm going to start here number one superhuman strength he can lift over 100 tons well still shush you're a dude whatever he can lift 100 tons that's all i'm saying um laser axe hand his hand turns to a laser axe um he can shoot energy blasts out of his eyes kind of like cyclops used to do that to megatron all the time um he has the power of flight we know that too. So he's, he can turn into several different things in, in ver- different versions of him. He's been a fire engine. He's been a dinosaur. He's been over, there's been over 13 different modes, things that he's transferred into. He has a blizzard storm ice attack, which in one episode, it stops a volcano from erupting because he shoots ice all over the volcano, stops it from erupting. Um, he has a power stream attack of water, shoot water out it in very strong very strong rates, um, pressure, immense pressure, I guess I'm looking for. He has this thing called the gyro attack where he takes the wheel from his leg and he spins it, spins it, spins it really fast. And it can like destroy people, destroy anything, robots, whatever that it hits. Um, he has a flying fist attack. Um, in fact, he's, he's also an expert with puns. The one time he used it, he said, you'll find that it packs quite a punch. I thought that was kind of like James Bond, one of my four former characters from last season. Um, he, let's see, he he loves puns, obviously. So that's one thing that's important. Maybe not, makes doesn't make him strong, but he likes it. He, uh, I found out he can combine with other robots to form even more strength, extra robot strength. He has lots of different hand tools, lots of different guns. Did you know he has a Spider-Man line that he can swing around in like Spider-Man? Not that he needs it because he has the power of flight, but he can do that if needed. Um, he has a very long lifespan. He also can force ghost someone or other of his comrades because he, he appears to them often in visions and gives them guidance, maybe during a lot of Man. the times when he's not alive. So uh, like Bumblebee is one. He does that too a couple times. As far as his music, he hates jazz, he hates rap. So that's one thing that's against him, I guess. But um, but overall... I have a quick question about that. Sure. Do you think he hates the Autobot jazz? (laughs) Or is he, like, cool with him? um, Because he's, like, one of the coolest Autobots. He gets very irritated when jazz plays his music, for sure. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yep, I just learned that today. Like, he jazz is a little bit too um, loose for him sometimes. Like, too easygoing, I think. But, um, gotcha. So, like, so many powers he's got, and just to kind of wrap it up, it originally his name was not even Optimus Prime, it was Orion Pax. Is that right? I believe that's what it is. Orion Pax, and he was uh, he was a dock worker of all things, and he was injured by Megatron, um, in a battle. Him and his girlfriend he was dating, I think her name was Ariel, and then one of his best friends, which is Dion, uh, Lita One, I think. Okay, yeah, she became a Lita One. Wait, 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 hold on. Autobots have girlfriends. Well, he did. Yes, there's female. Yes, there's there. female. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I forgot. Um, Alita One was not always Alita One. It was Ariel at first because I remember it was like the Little Mermaid. But he that was his girlfriend. Then he had his boy, number one boy named Dion, um, and all of them got you know injured, destroyed, whatever, and they were brought back. The name you said was what Ariel was brought back for, but um, some people think Dion was brought back as Ironhide, but that's never been confirmed. But, Op- but um, Optimus was brought back as Optimus Prime, and he was made into the strongest Autobot. The man who did it was 
this ancient, like one of the most earliest Autobots. And I had his name, but now it's gone. You might not, you might know, Kevin. I don't know. Um, but, uh, but he was rebuilt. Be, uh, I, I'd have to think about it. Well, he was rebuilt by this dude. And so he would be the strongest Autobot. And eventually he would become the leader um, in the fight against the Decepticons. And he was given the matrix, which I said with this matrix, I don't know if that got this matrix allows him to um, communicate with past um, leaders of the Autobots. And also it has the power of life where it can bring people back to life. So oh, Autobots. I remember that from the movie. Decepticons, Hot Rod gets it. Yeah. Um, they all have a long lifespan. So Optimus Prime's lifespan is definitely probably longer than your dude's. But overall, that's, I mean, he's, he's got the overall package, man. He got any weapon he wants. He has, he's very powerful, very wise, very good in battle. He has quite a lot of resources to use. Um, oh, one last quick fact I thought was interesting, which I didn't know. Um, you know how when he transforms his trailer can disattach from or whatever, it becomes a combat deck with a gun on it. He also has a little robot in there. Do you guys remember what that robot's name was? Oh, the little rolling thing? I remember the toy I had. Yeah, roller. Roller. Yep. Did you know that he was, he's connected to those things. So when he's away from roller, if roller feels pain, Optimus feels that pain and roller cannot live without Optimus prime. So I thought that was interesting how they're all connected together. It's an extension of his being. Right. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that was just, he's died a lot, but you know what? Every time he dies, he comes back to life. So let's see what you got with that. Let's see what you can do with that. <laughs> Well, the fact that he dies a lot, kind of, I mean, he obviously he dies a lot. He comes, he comes back though. <laughs> That's so, my point. He, he always comes the back. The question is, which, which version of Optimus Prime are we looking at? Because there's, you know, like talking about comic books, the old cartoon, the new cartoon, the movies. It was mostly the so cartoon. Many versions. It was mostly cartoon, but I was tying in things from the whole picture, man. Because I, I think you got to get a complete picture. Like the, I know the 13 things he transforms into are not on the original cartoon. I mean, one's from Beast Wars, one's from when he's a fire engine, that's like Robots in Disguise. That series, I think, came out in the early 2000s. That's I another question. Because because if we if we use the Beast Wars Optimus Prime, for sure, he would definitely lose in this match. Yeah, I didn't really use him other than the fact that I had to bring up the... But even in the little kids version, um, Rescue Bots, he, he um, summons his old dinosaur form. So he's done that in places oh. other than Beast Wars. Hmm. But... Go Interesting. ahead. So with, uh, Optimus Prime, you got a lot of points in the ring there, David. You, you, you brought up a lot of really good um, things to showcase how much of a leader and how how good he is with people and things. The Xenomorph does have a lot of strengths of her own. Um, I say her because I think a lot of times she's so, a queen. So Xenomorphs but, um, are, they don't ahead. really know for sure, but they're, they think that they're probably like um, hermaphroditic. But okay. definitely have gender. So the xenomorph, um, you know, so you're talking about Optimus Prime has this connection with his little robot friend and everything like that. So xenomorph has a uh, hive mind. So, you know, you're not dealing necessarily if you have more than wait, one. Wait, wait, stop for a second. Little robot friend, yes. But he also is connected to all these Autobots, which is a little, more than just a little hive. Like you're saying, did you say little hive or something like that? Optimus no, but, has a but it's army. not a little hive. So oh, okay. you, you have what's called the, the Xenomorph Empress, who will be in charge of multiple hives. And you have a queen that's in charge of multiple drones and warriors. It's like bees or ants or anything else. You can get like thousands of these things. Optus Prime's not going to be able to take that many Xenomorphs. It doesn't matter who you are. But um, what interesting about Xenomorph is they take on the characteristics of whatever, um, like, whatever host they have. So like the xenomorph that um is reproduces inside of a dog takes on the opportunities of the dog or of a human oh and, i did not know that and to include like intelligence levels so the xenomorphs that like let's say hatch from a human are more intelligent than the ones that hatch from like i don't know we'll say a rat or something so huh. um and there's not really any like it seems to me like they can pretty much uh reproduce within any organism so Autobot being, maybe he's a robot, but Autobot being an organism. But he doesn't have anything organic. Made. Like is, he's made of metal. So is it possible that like, it's not like he can latch onto his, you know. It, that's true. Or, but so, if we're talking about all 
all aspects of Apple Optimus Prime, that's why I said earlier, Beast Wars Optimus Prime turned to a gorilla, which is organic. Therefore, a xenomorph would be a gorilla. Okay, well, xenomorph. we're not talking about that one then. <laughs> <laughs> you, said, you said aspects of all of them. Steven can cut that uh, part so, out if he wants. <laughs> so, uh, let's see, what about xenomorph? So, they they have a variety of weapons. Um, yeah, they don't have guns or anything like that. But Oh, but um, wait. Yeah, they're t- the the dino. Hold on, Dave. Hold on. I'm sorry. You got, you, you got to let him do his thing, man. I know, but he, I had he, a let, he gave you some space. Yeah, because I so, didn't have any. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. So weapons would include their sharp claws, which can cut through pretty much anything. Yeah, these really sharp uh, claws. They have um, a very long, well, depending on what species they hatch from or which uh, which class they are. Because you have different class. You have your, like your worker, you have your warrior, you have your queen. But all of them have like a very strong tail with a very large blade that can also cut through almost anything so you have blunt force trauma as well as um like a like a sword or bladed item uh, weapon uh their jaw so their inner jaw which is what they use to like kill, they kill a lot of people with that it can go through almost anything as well it's a super powerful muscle in fact they think the reason why their heads are so long is it's contained all this muscle inside the head that controls the inner jaw you know like the tongue that has the mouth on it i don't know if you've ever seen the movie yeah yeah it's like a little jaw inside of a jaw yeah i think super powerful it's like pure muscle and it can go through it's been known to go through like solid armor of like the predator which is you know like pretty pretty dope so optimus prime being made of metal that's not going to phase this jaw it can go straight through it um their blood is made of acid a corrosive acid that could easily you know like dissolve through optimus prime's alloys or metals Ooh, that he has. I didn't think and about on that. top of that because of their xenomorphs are highly intelligent they understand that their blood is corrosive to others so they have been known to use their own blood as a weapon that's pretty savage and some xenomorphs can actually uh spit like this acid corrosive acid out of them you know like a cobra would he would definitely have some problems with that acid blood and you got to think because they take on attributes of whatever, including the size, whatever creature they take on, it would kind of, it would, it would kind of depend on what sort of uh, animal the xenomorph hatched from or xenomorphs hatched from. But anything that's, because that's trying pretty large, big robot. But we know in watching Transformers that there are, there are biological beings that are just as large, if not larger than Optimus. Like I watched an episode the other day where they got stuck in some alien kid's bedroom and they're like the size of toys for this alien. So, you know, I think the fact that the xenomorph can take on attributes of anything that it hatches from would be definitely a problem for Optimus Prime. Because if it takes on like, you know, one of these large alien creatures or whatever, then Optimus Prime is going to have a problem. So my first assessment here, um, I, obviously, I want you guys to have a little bit of a discussion now. You've introduced your characters, but it seems like Optimus Prime's got a lot of like the the moral code, like attrib- like human attributes. But I do feel like Xenomorph has the acid blood is a real problem for for Optimus Prime. So I'm 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 seeing both parts of this, and I'm I am torn right now. So well, let I'll, me see. I'll, we'll say this too. You remember Xenomorph also. You know they've been they've been shown to be able that they they can learn behaviors they can learn how to use machinery they can learn how to um because of their you know, they have the intelligence so um you know the fact that it can do like the trial by error and trial and error sort of thing it'll, it'll figure out what works and what doesn't work it's also theorized that xenomorphs being a hive mind can actually communicate some of that information towards each other so if one xenomorph mm. um learns like how to deal with a particular situation um you know, Xenomorph so does that afterwards. Too, Go ahead, also, uh, Xenomorph is very, like, they rely heavily on stealth. In this case, Optimus Prime is not a stealthy creature. <laughs> so, power of flight, <laughs> power of flight. And blue robot. So, you know, Xenomorph could just be hiding in almost anywhere and just pop out nowhere, use its acid blood to corrode through Optimus Prime's circuitry, and then boom, Optimus Prime's done. Okay, well, our David response. Let me just a couple of things I need to clarify. Number one, do we know this acid blood that you speak of? Like, obviously, Optimus Prime's alloy, it's probably isn't a little bit different than what we have on Earth. And would the acid blood be able to work against it? Do we know this for sure or or what? 
I mean, he, since Xenomorphs never hypotheticals here. in an Optimus Prime, <laughs> I guess we don't know for sure. But like, if you like, watch, he comes from a world like that's made of made of you know electronics, metals, robotics, whatever. Like, obviously, they're more advanced in their materials than we are here on Earth. So I'm just curious. What is that material that those those cubes they eat that they look like in the movie? What's the stuff called? Something that could destroy Xenomorphs. That's Cybertron. What it's called? Come on, <laughs> Energon cubes. Yeah, those the Energon are... cubes. That's the one. And I then, don't know. I think I think the Xenomorph blood probably could corrode through Optimus Prime because it, okay. it appears to be pretty well, pretty strong. That's action. your opinion. We'll let we'll leave it up to the judge. But you know that one that can't be proven for sure. And then the other thing I wanted to say when you brought up the whole organic thing, Optimus Prime changes to a robot, but the dinosaurs, Grimlock, and all them they changed to the to the animals but they're still ro- like they're still metal and yeah. robots isn't that how optimus prime works when he turns to a gorilla or no no if, like, if isn't he's he watch- still a robotic gorilla i don't know much no, about beast watch- wars so i might have to hand that if you watch you, but- beast wars when they turn into the animals they actually like have the organic attributes of those animals well beast wars is like, there's, part there's of an man. episode where <laughs> there's actually an episode where they're unable to transform back into robots and so they start becoming the wild animal itself oh. They're well, not just robotic versions of it. We're going to table the Beast Wars thing because obviously <laughs> that's not really a main thing. I said we're focused on the comics and the cartoon. But anyways. I don't know. It is so canon because it, it is canon because if you look at the Beast Wars 2, you interact with the other Autobots. Hmm. Like the Autobots. Okay. In fact, well, in the newest is- version in Netflix, like that's a big part of the story in Netflix is that they're actually part of the mm-hmm. same race. Well, whatever. That's not part of my story. <laughs> That, oh man, that might hurt my case. <laughs> Anyways, and this thing you're talking about how he communicates with the other Xenomorphs. I already explained Optimus Prime can do that. I already explained if Optimus Prime does die, he comes back pretty quickly. Like I know the Matrix could be an issue. Um, hopefully, the Xenomorph couldn't get a hold of that. But um, <laughs> but crazy, he, comes, <laughs> he comes back pretty quickly, and he can put his thoughts <laughs> and intelligence to the other robots. And obviously, sure, stealth, whatever, but. Um, like he goes after Optus Prime, he starts eating him or whatever. Then, you know, other Autobots, he could summon them and they could come take care of the Xenomorph. Didn't Arnold Schwarzenegger take care of the Xenomorph? No, he took care no, of the that's Predator. that's the Predator. Oh, yeah, duh. Okay, so <laughs> that shows my knowledge on him based on, but I'm just saying, like, I feel like I could draw from, he could draw from his other resources as well. Well, you know, like, well, and then my, my the, counter... My counter to that is with the Xenomorph. Yeah, okay, Optimus Prime, maybe he keeps coming back. But there's only one Optimus Prime. So um, Xenomorphs, you have like thousands and millions of these things, depending Optimus on... Optimus Prime can know, summon his dead ancestors. ancestors. Xenomorphs don't need to summon their dead, dead, dead ancestors. Saying, maybe they don't need they to, just, but Optimus Prime, that's an option he has if he wants to. They just to. send out the call, so, man, and the Xenomorphs come then, in. Like, if, you know, like, can you imagine, can you imagine like... Facing off like hundreds and thousands of these things, you wouldn't know to it. No, no matter who you are, Optimus Prime or not. Also, one of the, one of the other things about Xenomorph that I didn't mention earlier is they do have a knack for um, surviving extreme environments to include the vacuum of space. So, um, that's not right, man. Really? <laughs> but I mean, yes, Optimus Prime could do that too, though, yeah, he right? Can. Well, he yeah, can. he flies well, through space. But, um, but I see your point, though, the fact that. Optus Prime can't use space as a way to go away and regroup because the Xenomorph can come out. Okay, you're right. Now, I, will, I, will say, I will problem. say the Xenomorph can't live in the vacuum of space indefinitely, but they can't survive can. for a long time. And I bring that up because this this, this creature, it's like it survives. That's what it does. It, it just finds ways to survive. Hello, I just told you how Optimus Prime against. survives too. I told you how yeah, it does. Yeah, by dying. That doesn't count. You can't survive. Survival by, di- by death doesn't really count as survival, not does it? Survival by death sounds like a metal band. <laughs> I think I'm going to make a metal band. <laughs> survival by death. Do, 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 do. Oh, Sweet. No, I'm, so, I'm uh, curious if the Xenomorph could, could hatch from a Autobot. That's the it, point it I wanted not, to get back I, to. I feel, I feel like that's something that Regardless so, of how this debate goes, will be all amazing to see. If if a xenomorph can do that, then it's a different ball game because a xenomorph can go into any other Autobot and have everything Prime has plus what he has. But I don't know if, like, we don't know for sure if he can do that. So I don't know. Like, I will say, if he could do that, then you know, obviously we're in trouble over here on my end. But we don't know if he can do that, so we're gonna go with the we don't know if he can do that part. <laughs> But he's got a he's got a dude giant laser axe hand and he could chop that that's true. Up. 
Yeah, but as soon as he chops it up, the acid blood's going to corrode right through his Optimus Prime. See, I don't know, though, because how far would this blood sp- – like, Optimus is kind of big. He could, from far away, chop it. it might, the, he might be able to dodge the blood. Come on. You know, you I mean, know maybe. Uh, well, if it's going through the arm. But, it, but, but the he just bring out though, another one be... of his arm tools then. You know, oh, there's the axe, but I've got this instead. Big cannon. A net. <laughs> Spider-Man web I can swing on, which really wouldn't help him in this battle, actually. So never mind. <laughs> <laughs> but still it's still cool and, like, and I, will, right, I will say so like if i will say part of it can largely depend in david's defense on what sort of creature the xenomorph that Optimus prime is fighting has hatched from because it does because oh. it does take on attributes of whatever hatched from and it can that can like so obviously if it hatches from like a dog it's gonna be less capable than one that hatches from you know a human or something like that but um i feel like if Xenomorph hatched from a creature, biological or not, that is in the um, Autobot like universe, aside from like a dog or something, um, I thought Strom would have a hard Spike. time. Hatched from oh, Spike. that would be poor Spike. Man. <laughs> poor Spike. Or, or all those weird fish creature things. Or if he like hatched inside of um, what's the name of that tape that comes out as so- sound wave that turns into a savage bird? What is that? I can't remember that. Thing. Oh, laser beak. Yeah, that thing might take care of him pretty good if he hatched inside of that. <laughs> Xenomorphs are beasts, though. Their reproductive system uh, cycle is insane. That's true. And Optimus Prime hasn't had a girlfriend since 4 million years ago. <laughs> so he, he hasn't been reproducing, I guess. But he can put his you know thoughts in. He's just always there, even when he's not physically there. Well, I mean, like he sort of has been reproducing, though. Every time he dies, he like passes his, <laughs> his being on to the Did next you- leader of the, of the Optimus Matrix. Prime I, one of the things I read it's like it said it's comical how often he's willing to sacrifice his life yeah it kind of is because so, he keeps coming back he knows he's going to come back again. It's true. Like, I got this. the reason he came back to begin with is because everyone got ticked after he died in the movie and Hasbro's like oh crap we have to sell more toys let's bring him back Dude, speaking <laughs> of on a completely unrelated topic I'm sorry I'm going way off base here but did you guys know the G.I. Joe movie like the old cartoon one the reason why Duke goes into a coma instead of die is because of um, the backlash of Optimus Prime dying yeah I thought there was a connection I heard that yeah that's interesting but I think Optimus Prime was like, more Duke yeah, I think he was. That's why you never see him too. again after he goes into his coma because they already animated the whole thing. And then at the end, they're like, oh crap, they didn't want to have Valtus Prime. So they throw in like a little voiceover, oh, Duke's okay. And well, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and then they do this cheer thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, Stephen. Well, I think we're going to have to, I mean, tell us what you think from both sides and see if you can have some, unless you, you have more, Kevin, you have more to say. No, I mean, I was going to go into the yeah, more life cycle, but it's not really relevant to how this battle would go. So. Still an interesting fact. You can do that quickly. I'll... So it starts off as like like an egg, though the egg itself is kind of interesting because thought, the thought is that the egg itself might actually be a living creature. Um, and it has the the face hugger inside of it. So and also there's different various forms of face huggers. So some face huggers become drones and warriors. Some become queens. You just said face hugger. <laughs> face <awesome>. hugger. <laughs> um, some become queens. So it, it depends on like um which type of xenomorph like what cast is going to evolve from that face hugger however a xenomorph that is say a warrior class um can evolve eventually into a queen cast if it if it becomes necessary if they're like trying to extend the species so that's what i'm saying it's a very it's a ever evolving species it's highly intelligent and that's as well as be Optimus problem. Prime is too. Yeah. But that's going to be a problem for Optimus Prime because they're going to find the Xenomorphs are going to be able to survive somehow because they always do. And so will Prime. Um, <laughs> by coming back to life. So you had this little face hugger in there. And so when the egg senses that there's a potential host nearby, it opens up and then the face hugger pump comes out of the egg, latches itself to the host, and then implants an embryo inside the host. And then at that point, the embryo grows. And then when it becomes enough to be a chest buster um oh my goodness that would take care of the matrix really easily it? It, it it pops out of the chest at that point it doesn't have legs or anything so it goes away and then um it emolts its skin and it starts growing into the xenomorph so and this process can take as little as a few hours hmm. um well the life cycle so, of, of optimus prime is he was created millions of years ago he was stuck in a volcano on Earth for like three million years, and now he's back. <laughs> both the Alien and Transformers, both franchises have 
you know they they keep making movies so they just can't stop <laughs> gotta say that's one thing as much as i love them but i mean since the 70s and 80s they keep going i, I looked it up aliens had been featured in six feature films and optimus prime has also been featured he's been featured in five soon to be six that's the i think scene. if you yeah, this, uh, yeah cartoon five or six movies something like that there's like so, so many different they're, cartoons they're, too oh my gosh there's a lot of Transformers and Alien going around. All right. Actually, I, just, I forgot the Alien versus Predator movies. That makes like eight movies for the Alien. Anyway. Okay. Let's see what you got, Stephen. Let's see. Here's my assessment. David, you came on really strong. Uh, you, 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 had, you had me with uh, the, the, the statue in China, the Prime <laughs> Minister of Canada. You brought some real life fourth wall facts <laughs> to give a really good case for Optimus Prime. And I was, I was like, man. He's got it in the bag. As soon as you came out with all that stuff, I felt really good about what you had to say. Kevin, you it come was. in with the, some, some, some pure facts about the Xenomorph, pure and true. This came in right in attack mode. And this is where, I, at this point, I was, I was struggling because I was, man, these are both really, they both did their research. They both have really good cases to make here. But then when that discussion started happening a little bit more, a lot of the points that Kevin brought up with the Xenomorph, you didn't have as much to stand on, David. That's the truth. You, you, I want Optimus Prime to win because Optimus Prime is a good dude. And like in my heart, that's what I want. But I think the reality is... He's a friend, to, he's a friend to humans. He's a friend to humans. Xenomorph is not. You're yes, a it is. I know. I know. Dude, I, I, Xenomorphs love humans, okay? <laughs> They're always hugging them. <laughs> But you know, as as much as I want Optimus Prime to have this, I think the Xenomorph does does take it. So congratulations, Kevin. Well, the two words when I knew I was done when I heard the word acid blood. I tried to argue that because <laughs> we don't know for sure about what kind of metal Optimus is made now, out of. But even though we have determined that we don't know if, if it could happen, and by the way, now that the I have actually won, you can't go back at that on David. I do remember that I did specifically say that uh, Xenomorphs. Um, will not be able to reproduce in a mechanical oh. <laughs> mechanical life form. <laughs> I, totally, I just I just read that and I was like I'm just gonna oh, not say anything. Um, anyways, it uh, doesn't shot. change but, the case though. <laughs> but, it kind of could a little bit, but all right, well, I'll, I'll be I'll be gracious in my defeat. But can you imagine like the Zeno did reproduce inside a Decepticon? How done like the Autobots would be? I was be? thinking about that. Megatron could really take advantage of the Xenomorph. I think he could. I don't know. I could see that being a one of his weird plots. That's right. All right. I sent the text. I sent you, uh, Kevin, and you. I guess uh, all the leftover people. Um, so, Kevin, if you want to pick two randomly, um, one for David, one for me. Oh, I, I already picked let's... two based because I forgot. I thought I was the judge, but that's right. Okay, my two would have been awesome, but we'll let Kevin go ahead. So, well, you, you have to do it okay. random. Though. Well, I did. I did. I did, yeah, I did no, do it random, random, but because I forgot that. Oh well, if you already did a random, go go ahead, Dave, because I haven't even. We right, could change it. Yet, the, so. the the loser will be the judge. Okay. Well, <laughs> just because this one is going to be good, I don't know. It'll be good. Text yeah. me and then, or text Kevin first. Make sure don't accidentally put it in our group chat. Like, okay, hold on, Kevin. I'm going to send you yours first, but I have to find your number on here. <laughs> this is going to be good. And I don't know what to do with that. <laughs> and the, All right, what's mine? What's mine? Hold on, I'm getting to it. It's coming right now. I promise it was random. I, I, I wouldn't, you know, it'd be be all random and i think there's a misspelling okay go ahead i sent both yours I, I know who it is though all right all right that's cool i like that one i, I that's a character i don't know <laughs> what the well, heck so. am i supposed to do with that joe um, thank uh, our listeners i already thank our I already, listeners for making I already, requests. Con- I already consent to my loss it's <laughs> <laughs> gonna be great i don't even know what you have but i'm super excited to, to have my character go up against yours like all of these are completely <laughs> random, right? Like there's some that would seem like they would naturally link up against each other, but we're, we're taking those apart and still making them all completely random. So, all right. Um, well, that was, this was fun guys. I'm excited that we're back into it. Um, and listeners, what are your thoughts? Who do you think would have won between Optimus Prime and the Xenomorph? We'd love to hear your thoughts just because I picked the Xenomorph I'd I'd still like to hear your your cases as well so I love Prime but I think I I concede my loss in this one for sure I mean that (laughs) other point Kevin brought up conveniently afterwards could change the outcome a little bit but but you know acid blood bro yeah acid blood yeah 
that those are the two. That's all you had to say. And then you could have mic dropped. It, 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 even it, it, it's what, what gives it to me is not only the fact that acid blood, but the fact that aliens are smart enough to know that they can use their acid blood as a weapon. Well, anyways, probably should wrap it up, but it was good. Good discussion. All right, dudes. We'll catch you next time. Thanks for listening to Season 2, Episode 16 of BBP, the first installment in our Unlikely Throwdowns. Special shout out to Aditya Vyas for their image of Optimus Prime and Diego Marin for their image of The Alien. Both of these images can be found on Unsplash.com. Also want to give a special thank you to our loyal listener Sean Sullivan for recommending the character used in today's podcast. Folks, we're just getting started. There are still more throwdowns coming your way. Check out our Facebook page, facebook.com slash brothersbornpodcast. Leave a review on your podcatcher. Anything you can do to spread the word is appreciated. So, until next time, Autobots, roll out.